Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting blog. In this video, I do a detailed comparison of the 6.5 Grindle and 300 Blackout cartridges. Now, I think that most hunters and shooters who like using modern sporting rifles probably agree the 223 Remington and its relative, the 5.56 NATO, are both effective in certain situations. At the same time, though, the shortcomings of those cartridges are also very apparent to most people. So this has led to the development of many other cartridges designed to improve on the performance of the 5.56 and 223, but still function in an AR platform. Now the 6.5 Grindle and the 300 Blackout are currently among the most widely used of those cartridges. As good as they are though, the 6.5 Grindle and 300 Blackout are not perfect and there are some downsides to using them. For that reason, this episode is a detailed comparison of the 6.5 Grendel and the 300 Blackout, where I discuss the strengths and weaknesses of each one so you, can so you can decide which one is best for your particular hunting situation. Before we get started, make sure you are on my email list. To do that, click that link below or go to huntingguns101.com and sign up for my free ebook on the best hunting cartridges. You'll get my free ebook when you do that, plus you'll also start to receive the emails I send out every weekday. These are entertaining and informative emails about hunting, shooting, ballistics, etc. And I get feedback all the time from people telling me how much they enjoy receiving those emails and how much they look forward to hearing from me every day. So make sure you are getting them too by going to huntingguns101.com. Additionally, make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to make sure you get my future videos and hit that like button, the thumbs up button, if you like this video. Okay, so let's get started talking about the 6.5 Grendel and the 300 Blackout. As usual, we'll start with the history of the two cartridges. Now, the story of both cartridges starts with the 223 Remington and the 5.56 NATO. Now, the U.S. military selected the M16 rifle and the high-velocity 5.56 by 45 millimeter cartridge to replace the relatively new M14 rifle and 7.62 by 51 millimeter cartridge during the early 1960s. Remington saw the potential for a tremendous commercial opportunity here and developed a civilian version of the new cartridge that was extremely similar to, but not identical to, the 5.56 NATO. Derived from the 222 Remington and formerly standardized with SAMI as the 223 Remington in the early 1960s, this new cartridge could fire a 55 grain bullet at a muzzle velocity approaching 3,300 feet per second. The 5.56 NATO had similar ballistics in the original 5.56 by 45 millimeter M193 ball load fired a 224 caliber 55 grain full metal jacket bullet at 3,250 feet per second. Now, unfortunately, the cartridge in the M16 got off to a really rough start with the U.S. Army and Marine Corps in Vietnam. Modifications to the rifle and ammunition solved most of the reliability problems that plagued that system during the war. Uh, even so, large numbers of people in the military still had serious concerns regarding the stopping power of that little cartridge, though, especially with the new M855 load adopted with the M16A2 in the 1980s. Incorporating a new bullet design with a steel penetrator, the M855 load fired a 62 grain full metal jacket bullet at 3,025 feet per second. Now the M855 penetrates a lot better than the old M193, but complaints about terminal performance with this cartridge from soldiers grew even louder after that new ball load saw use in combat in the 1990s and early 2000s. Civilian hunters who adopted the AR-15 and the 223 Remington cartridge during the last couple decades of the 20th century shared many of those concerns. The rifle and cartridge performed very well for predator and varmint hunting and for target shooting, but the 222, excuse me, the 223 Remington also developed a reputation for unsatisfactory performance on bigger game like deer. However, the AR-15 platform did offer a number of advantages to shooters, and it eventually became very popular in the United States. So with this in mind, gun designers understood they were looking at a potentially massive commercial opportunity if they could build a cartridge that improved on the 223 Remington but still functioned in the AR-15. Now, realizing that many people love the AR-15 as well as the 223 Remington really wasn't the best choice for hunting big game, 
Designers set about developing a number of larger bore cartridges that were more powerful than the 223, but still function in AR-15 rifles. Among others, this list includes cartridges like the 6.8 Remington SPC, the 450 Bushmaster, 458 SOCOM, and the 50 Beowulf. However, of all those cartridges, the 6.5 Grendel and the 300 Blackout are two of the most popular alternatives to, do, to the 223-556 cartridges that still function in the AR-15. Bill Alexander developed the 50 Beowulf as a big bore alternative to the, to the 223 in 2001. He also designed the 6.5 Grendel as a medium bore option in the same market niche in 2002. By modifying a 6.5 millimeter PPC case, which is itself descended from the 220 Russian and 7.62 by 39 millimeter cartridges, Alexander was successful in building an efficient, accurate, and sweet shooting cartridge that still functioned well in the AR-15. Capable of firing a 120 grain bullet at 2,600 feet per second, the 6.5 Grendel is also significantly more powerful than the 223 Remington. Now, this cartridge is also quite versatile, and it worked extremely well for long-range shooting, tactical, law enforcement, and varmint hunting applications. It is also a surprisingly effective big-game hunting cartridge. Now, the cartridge did initially struggle to gain widespread acceptance in the shooting and hunting communities for a variety of reasons, one of which was the fact that Bill Alexander trademarked the name of the cartridge. However, he relinquished the trademark in 2011 when the cartridge gained SAMI approval, thus allowing other companies to manufacture ammo, barrels, etc., bearing the name 6.5 Grendel. Now, since then, the cartridge has gained traction as an effective hunting round with more and more hunters who appreciate the improved performance it offers over the 223 Remington and have adopted it accordingly. Now, let's talk about the 300 Blackout. Leaders in the military started to look for a new cartridge that could reliably shoot 30 caliber bullets from an M16 or M4 rifle while still using a standard bolt and gas system in the early 2000s. And they wanted to accomplish several goals with this new cartridge. First, they wanted a new cartridge that performed better than the standard 5.56 ammunition when using just standard high-powered stuff. And I mean supersonic ammunition there, because the next requirement was they also wanted a cartridge that was more powerful than the 9mm Luger pistol cartridge when using subsonic ammo. They also wanted the new cartridge to reliably function and still perform well when used in rifles with short barrels. And they, they wanted a new cartridge that would function reliably in an M16 or an M4 platform with no modifications other than a barrel change. And the new cartridge also needed to be dimensionally similar enough to the 5.56 that a standard M16 or AR magazine could still hold 30 rounds of the new cartridge without any modifications. They found a solution with the 300 Whisper cartridge, designed by J.D. Jones of SSK Industries in the 1990s. The 300 Whisper used a 221 Remington Fireball case necked up to shoot 30 caliber projectiles. However, since the 300 Whisper was a Wildcat cartridge, designers at Advanced Armament Corporation or AAC made a few modifications to the cartridge, renamed it the 300 AAC Blackout and received SAMI approval in 2011. This allowed the cartridge to enter large-scale production with major ammunition manufacturers. Now, the 300 Blackout is available in several different supersonic loads. For instance, Barnes manufactures a load shooting a 110-grain TAC-TX bullet at a muzzle velocity of 2,350 feet per second. Hornady produces a load shooting a 125-grain hollow point at 2,175 feet per second. Both of those loads offer performance that exceeds the performance delivered by the 223 Remington and even approaches the performance of the 762 by 39 millimeter and 3030 Winchester cartridges. The 300 Blackout also performs reliably, functions reliably in a suppressed M16 or M4, same with the AR platform, when using subsonic loads. For instance, Seller and Balot's subsonic ammunition shooting a 220 grain full metal jacket at 1,060 feet per second, or Hornady's subsonic offering using a 190 grain sub X at 
1,050 feet per second from a 16-inch barrel, both easily surpassed the performance of the 9mm Luger with subsonic ammo, which is a 147-grain bullet at about 1,000 feet per second. Now, those two uh, 300 blackout loads are delivering... 549 foot-pounds of energy for the Seller and Balat, 465 foot-pounds of energy for the Hornady load, and that uh, 9mm Luger subsonic load is giving you about 325 foot-pounds of energy. Okay, now let's talk about the relative sizes of the 300 Blackout and the 6.5 Grendel, now that we're done talking about their history. So first, they use different diameter bullets. The 6.5 Grendel uses .264 caliber bullets, and the 300 Blackout uses .308 caliber bullets. And there's also a big difference in their bullet weights. Most 6.5 Grendel ammo typically has bullet weights in the 90 to 130 grain range, with 100, 110, 120, and 123 grain bullets being the most common. The majority of 300 blackout factory loads shoot bullets in the 90 to 220 grain range, though. 110 grain, 120 grain, 150 grain, and uh, 220 grain bullets are the most popular. There's also that Hornady 190 grain subsonic load in there, too. And that's a big part of the distinguishing factors in their performance as well, is that you're, there's not really hardly any 6.5 Grindel subsonic loads, whereas that's a pretty significant uh, part of the 300 blackout ammo line. More on this, on this in a second. Now, both cartridges are designed for use in an AR-15, which can only accommodate cartridges up to 2.26 inches long. So the 300 Blackout and the 6.5 Grindel, which each have the same overall length of 2.26 inches, are the maximum size of a cartridge that will still fit in a standard AR-15. Aside from that, the two cartridges have pretty different dimensions, though. The 6.5 Grindel uses a longer case that is also larger in diameter. The end result is the 6.5 Grindel has a significantly larger case capacity and can hold more powder. That said, don't forget the 6.5 Grindel is descended from the 220 PPC and 762 by 39 millimeter cartridges. So for that reason, the cartridge has a larger 0.438 inch rim diameter and also has more taper than the 223 and 556 cartridges and the 300 Blackout. For this reason, the 6.5 Grindel requires a different bolt and ideally a special magazine for optimum reliability. That's not the case with the 300 Blackout, though, since it has the same 0.378-inch rim diameter and an overall shape similar enough to the 223 and 556 cartridge. It can use the same bolt face and the same magazine as the 223 and 556 cartridges. And we'll talk more about magazines here in a minute. Additionally, the 300 Blackout is loaded to a little bit higher SAMI maximum average pressure of 55,000 PSI versus 52,000 PSI for the 6.5 Grendel. Now let's talk about their ballistics. Now the differences in the external dimensions of these cartridges also translates into some interesting differences in their ballistic performance. This is illustrated when you compare Barnes Vortex, Hornady Custom, Federal Fusion MSR, and Nosler Ballistic Tip Factory Ammo. The 6.5 Grindel loads in this comparison use 115 grain TTSX with a .400 BC, 120 grain Fusion with a .340 BC, 120 grain ballistic tip with a 0.458 BC and 123 grain SST with a 0.510 BC bullet. Now the 300 blackout loads in this comparison use 110 grain TAC TX with a 0.300 BC, 125 grain ballistic tip with a 0.366 BC and 150 grain fusion with a 0.330 BC bullet. Now, notice that the various bullets used in those 6.5 Grindel loads all have a higher BC than those used in the comparable 300 Blackout loads. Now, the Nosler Ballistic Tip and Fusion MSR loadings are two of the very few factory ammo loads that use the exact same bullet for each cartridge. Now, at the same time, those Barnes loads do not use the exact same bullet, but they're pretty darn close. And finally, at the same time, I could not do a comparison involving the 6.5 Grindel without including that Hornady Custom 6.5 Grindel load with the 123 grain SST. I think that's arguably the best 6.5 Grindel factory hunting load in current production. Um, so I had to put it in there. Now, Hornady, unfortunately, does not produce a 300 blackout loading using a similar projectile. So I'm just going to put that uh, 6.5 Grindel loading in there and we'll just compare all these seven loads to each other. Now... With all that said, 
You look at the ballistics for this stuff. 6.5 Grindel has a significant edge in terms of kinetic energy and trajectory over the 300 Blackout. This is because the cartridge has an advantage in case capacity, so it typically has a significantly higher muzzle velocity than is the case with the 300 Blackout. This can vary to from 50 to 700 feet per second, depending on the exact load in question. Now, the Federal Fusion loads are somewhat of an outlier here due to the especially low muzzle velocity of that heavy 150 grain 300 blackout load. The 6.5 Grendel still has 150 foot per second edge with the ballistic tip loads and a 240 foot per second advantage, even when shooting a heavier bullet with the Barnes loads. Heck, that 6.5 Grindle Hornady load is still pushing a 123 grain bullet 230 feet per second faster than the 300 Blackout as firing a 110 grain bullet with the Barnes 300 Blackout load. Now, the fact that the 6.5 Grindle uses much more aerodynamic bullets across the board means that advantage grows as range increases. So the 6.5 Grindle starts out with significantly more energy at the muzzle, 9 to 51 percent depending on the exact load and this advantage in retained energy grows as the range increases you got a 23 to 139 percent advantage at 500 yards at the same time while i wouldn't describe it as an especially flat shooting round the 6.5 grindle still has a significantly flatter trajectory with less bullet drop at all ranges let's talk about crosswind now once again, the 6.5 Grindle handily outperforms the 300 Blackout in terms of wind drift at all ranges. That dif difference is especially pronounced when comparing that high BC 123 grain Hornady load to the 300 Blackout and even the other 6.5 Grindle loads because it's a fast loading with a really high BC bullet. Let's talk about recoil now. Now, when you compare recoil produced by hand loads approximating the Nosler ballistic tip loadings from identical 7-pound rifles, you'll see that the 300 Blackout has about 20% less recoil than the 6.5 Grindel. This is because the cartridge uses significantly less powder to push a bullet of similar weight at a slower velocity. Even so, the 6.5 Grindel is still a relatively mild recoiling cartridge itself. For example, the mild-kicking 243 Winchester firing a 100-grain bullet at about 3,000 feet per second from a 7-pound rifle produces about 12 foot-pounds of recoil. Compare that to about 8 foot-pounds of recoil for the 6.5 Grindel load in this comparison. So all things considered, most hunters should be able to handle the recoil from both the 300 Blackout and the 6.5 Grindel without much trouble. Though the 300 Blackout does have a small edge in this respect for, you know, and that's more important for smaller or really recoil shy hunters. Now, additionally, there are a couple of other factors that are also worth discussing. So first, the 300 Blackout uses larger diameter bullets than the 6.5 Grindel. Specifically, the larger diameter .308 caliber bullets used by the 300 Blackout have about 36% more frontal surface area than the 6.5 Grendel. All other things being equal, a bigger bullet will make a bigger hole, cause more tissue damage, and result in more blood loss. That's a definite advantage in favor of the 300 Blackout. On the other hand, the 6.5 Grendel has a small edge over the 300 Blackout in terms of sectional density. Now, sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. All other things equal, a heavier bullet of a given caliber will be longer and therefore have a higher sectional density and penetrate deeper than projectiles with a lower mass and lower sectional density. For example, 110 grain, 120 grain, 150 grain, 190 grain, and 220 grain .308 caliber bullets have sectional densities of 0.166, 0.181, 0 0.220, excuse me, 0 0.226, 0 0.286, and 0.331, respectively. Compare that to 115 grain, 120 grain, 123 grain, 0 0.264 caliber bullets, which have sectional densities of 0 0.236, 0 0.246, and 0 0.252, respectively. Now, while the heaviest 300 blackout bullets uh, do indeed outclass the common 6.5 Grindel bullet weights in terms of sectional density, those heavier bullets for the 300 blackout are only commonly used in subsonic loadings. The 6.5 Grindel has the edge with the most common bullet weights for each cartridge in supersonic loads. All right, so where do we stand with each cartridge? The 6.5 Grindel fires smaller diameter, often lighter, usually more aerodynamic bullets at a significantly faster velocity than the 300 Blackout. Therefore, the 6.5 Grindel has a flatter trajectory, more resistance to wind drift, and carries significantly more kinetic energy downrange than the 300 Blackout. 
All right, now let's talk about ammo availability. Both are reasonably popular cartridges, but neither can really compare to stuff like the 223 Remington 308 Winchester or 65 Creedmoor in sheer volume of ammo sales. That said, the 65 Grendel and the 300 Blackout are both very popular alternatives to the 223 and 556 cartridges in the AR platform, and there are good factory ammo choices for both. Now, the big ammo manufacturers like Barnes, Federal, Hornady, and Nosler produce quality 6.5 Grindel and 300 Blackout factory ammo suitable for hunting. Now, 300 Blackout and 6.5 Grindel ammo is available from Barnes in their Vortex line, from Federal with their Fusion MSR and American Eagle lines, from Hornady with their American Gunner, Black, and Custom lines, and from Nosler in their Ballistic Tip and Varmageddon lines. Hornady also produces 300 Blackout ammo in their subsonic line, which is probably the best option available for those who want to hunt with a suppressed rifle and subsonic ammo. Nosler also offers 300 Blackout in their expansion tip line and the 6.5 Grendel in their trophy grade long range line. Alexander Arms still produces 6.5 Grendel ammo, and Wolf also offers a pretty good low priced full metal jacket op- option for that cartridge too. Winchester produces hunting ammo for the 300 Blackout, but not the 6.5 Grendel as part of their Deer Season XP and PowerPoint lines. They also produce some other 300 Blackout loadings better suited for target shooting and self-defense. Remington produces match and or target shooting loads for both cartridges, but no hunting ammo for the Grendel or the Blackout at this instant. Now, during normal times, it's usually not that different to find ammo for either cartridge, and most gun or sporting goods stores will have some in stock. However, while they're by no means rare, many smaller uh, gun stores won't keep 6.5 Grendel or 300 Blackout ammo in stock. Now, during the big ammo shortage that we're just coming out of here in 2023, the difference between the two has become pretty scrambled, and at least where I live in shop, 300 Blackout ammo is usually easier to find than 6.5 Grendel ammo. But that's just me. Your mileage may vary, though. All right, let's talk about rifle availability for each one. So both cartridges are commonly chambered in semi-auto rifles, and that probably has a lot to do with the fact that they were originally designed for use in the AR-15 platform. But there's also a couple of good bolt-action rifles chambered in 6.5 Grendel and 300 Blackout. Alexander Arms manufactured the first rifles in 6.5 Grendel, and they continue to do so. Since then, Wilson Combat and a couple of other companies like Bear Creek Arsenal, Diamondback, DPMS, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, and the Tennessee Arms Company have started producing modern sporting rifles chambered in the cartridge. The Ruger American Ranch and Predator bolt-action rifles are currently manufactured in 6.5 Grendel. The same goes for the CZ-527 and the Howa Mini. The situation is similar with the 300 Blackout, but there are a few more options in that chambering. For instance, AR-15 style rifles like those made by Barrett, CMMG, Daniel Defense, Diamondback, DPMS, LWRC, Rock River, Ruger, Six Hour, and Wilson Combat are extremely popular with the 300 Blackout. The 300 Blackout is also available in the Ruger Mini-14, the Ruger American Ranch Rifle, the Mossberg MVP, the CZ-527, the Savage 110, and the Remington Model 700 SPS Tactical. It's even possible to get a 300 AAC Blackout barrel for the single-shot Thompson Center Encore. And it's also possible to purchase a 6.5 Grendel or 300 Blackout upper receiver and convert an existing AR-15 in a different chambering to shoot the Grendel or Blackout cartridge. Now, we can't have a 6.5 Grendel versus 300 Blackout comparison without discussing the magazine situation. First, since it is more closely related to the 223 Remington cartridge and is you know, similar in shape, 300 Blackout can use regular AR-15 or M16 rifle or M4 carbine magazines designed for use with the 223 and 556 cartridges without modifications. And those magazines will still retain a 30 round capacity. You can purchase 300 Blackout magazines if you want the absolute best reliability, but regular 223 or 556 NATO magazines will often work just fine with the 300 Blackout though. So keep that in mind if you already have a pile of Magpul mags for your AR-15. There is one vitally important safety consideration to keep in mind for those who own rifles chambered in both 223 and 300 Blackout, though. A 300 Blackout cartridge 
can indeed chamber and fire with catastrophic results in a 223 Remington or a 556 NATO chamber. Trying to push a 30 caliber bullet down a 22 caliber bore will likely destroy your rifle and potentially cause severe injury or death as a result. So those who own rifles in both cartridges should exercise extreme care to avoid mixing ammo for the two cartridges. For that reason alone, it might be a good idea to purchase some dedicated 300 blackout magazines and then segregate those magazines from all your 223 or 556 stuff to further reduce the odds of a serious accident like that occurring if you accidentally mix ammo. The situation is different for the 6.5 Grendel, though. That cartridge can use regular M16 magazines with a slight decrease in magazine capacity and sometimes in reliability. A typical 30-round 2.23 or 5.56 magazine will usually hold up to 26 6.5 Grendel rounds. However, that cartridge has a larger rim diameter and a significantly different shape compared to the 2.23 cartridge. So for that reason, purpose-built 6.5 Grendel magazines with a modified follower and feed lips do provide optimal reliability. But like I said, your mileage may vary. There are some people that get great results out of a regular AR-15 or M16 magazine. The only way to know is to find out. So which cartridge is right for you? Do you primarily hunt medium game like white-tailed deer or feral hogs at ranges within 200 yards? Both cartridges will absolutely get the job done if you do your part at shorter range. However, I think the 6.5 Grendel has a definite edge here, especially at ranges past 100 yards. The 6.5 Grendel has more kinetic energy at all ranges, and most 6.5 Grendel hunting loads carry 1,000 foot-pounds of energy out to 200 to 300 yards. That 123 grain SST load is an exception, and it carries that much energy out past 400 yards. On the other hand, most supersonic 300 blackout loads only carry 1,000 foot-pounds of energy out to about 100 yards. So with that in mind, I'd strongly recommend a 100 to 150-yard maximum for the 300 blackout on deer size game. Now, are you looking for a better cartridge for longer range hunting, like for game like mule deer, pronghorn, and open country where you might need to take a shot at longer range? To be perfectly honest, I don't like either cartridge for hunting at longer range. But if you were restricted to just these two cartridges, I think the 6.5 Grendel is definitely the better option than the 300 Blackout in this application since it has a flatter trajectory, quite a bit less wind deflection, and it carries significantly more energy out past 200 yards. What about if you want something to hunt bigger game? Black bear, caribou, moose, elk, eland, whatever, right? I consider both cartridges too light for this sort of hunting, and I strongly recommend against using either one on game bigger than deer or feral hogs. Do you want the ideal cartridge to use with a suppressor? Both work in this area, but the 300 Blackout is a little bit better choice here than the 6.5 Grendel, since this is what the 300 Blackout was specifically designed to do. Just use extreme caution if you want to hunt with 300 Blackout subsonic rounds. Those loads can be very accurate, but there are lots of bad stories about poor terminal performance on deer and feral hogs when using subsonic 300 blackout ammo. Hornady makes a 190 grain subsonic load specifically designed for hunting that they claim works well on big game. I don't like subsonic ammo for hunting big game in general, but this is what I would recommend for someone who insisted on using it. And remember what I said earlier about comparing the 300 Blackout subsonic stuff to 9mm 147 grain ammo. Yeah, it's more powerful than that, but you're still talking about pistol type uh, muzzle energies here. Yeah, you can kill stuff with them, but you're talking about performance that is closer to a 9mm or a 45 ACP in terms of energy than closer to typical rifle stuff, even stuff on the lighter end, like a 243, for instance. So yeah, it'll work. Energy isn't everything, but those subsonic loads are really uh, on the anemic end of the energy spectrum. So just keep all that in mind. Are you looking for the perfect cartridge for use in a short-barreled rifle? Both cartridges lose a certain amount of velocity here with shorter, shorter barrel lengths, but once again, 
I think you should go with the 300 Blackout. It performs closer to its full potential with a shorter 16-inch barrel, as well as with a barrel length shorter than 16 inches, and it loses less velocity than the 6.5 Grindle does in shorter barrels. The 6.5 Grindle just needs a longer barrel for optimum performance. As a rule of thumb, 18 inches is a good minimum barrel length for the 6.5 Grindle. 20 inches seems to be the optimum barrel length for that cartridge, though, and even longer barrels aren't that uncommon, and you can see 22 or even 24-inch barrels from time to time with the 6.5 Grindle. Now, do you want a cartridge suitable for self-defense? Both certainly work in this regard, but there are more choices for purpose-built self-defense ammo for the 300 Blackout, like that Barnes TAC-TX and the Lehigh uh, Defense Close Quarters Bullet and others than is the case with the 6.5 Grendel. But like I said, both will work, but this seems to be an area where the 300 Blackout really seems to get a lot of love as well. Now, are you looking for an ideal cartridge to use for hunting and an AR-15 platform in general? Both work both are improvements over the 223 Remington, but I think the 6.5 Grendel is the most capable and most flexible cartridge that will function in the AR-15, at least among the stuff that is commonly available and SAMI certified. So are you sensitive to recoil? Both cartridges have mild recoil, but the 300 Blackout does have less recoil than the 6.5 Grendel. With all that said, the 6.5 Grendel and the 300 Blackout are both solid rifle cartridges that largely live up to the expectations of those who design them. However, while there is some overlap in their performance and ideal uses, they're not identical. In some areas, the differences between them are pretty darn big. So you need to carefully evaluate your needs as a hunter based upon the circumstances you foresee using either cartridge in, get a good hunting rifle chambered in the cartridge you select, learn to shoot it well, use quality ammo, and it should serve you well afield. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now and hit that like button. Just click the thumbs up button and the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos on hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. For more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they are best suited for, click the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting cartridges. Now I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Which one do you prefer? The 6.5 Grendel or the 300 Blackout? What game have you successfully taken with each one and what ammo did you use when you took that game? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Also, feel free to leave a comment with requests for other comparisons you would like to see me do in the future. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.